we're doing is putting a microphone in citizen's face. Oh, no, really? So you're saying me putting a microphone in people's face to talk is smearing them? No, you don't follow our channel. Come here, sir. Come here, sir. Come here. I'm offering you a chance to talk. See, you're smearing yourself. Here we go. If you can, in some way, get a form or something to uh, promise to not cut any of what I say, or have the full. You, put it out. you can go to Alex Jones' channel on YouTube and see your videos in entirety. He's a liar. <laughs> Alex Jones is a out of my head. Yes, I love it. He's got nothing. <laughs> hey, I mean, dude, he's just. <laughs> Sorry, folks. I got so fired up, you know. People say all this stuff about Trump. They have nothing to say. No depth. This guy says Alex Jones is a liar. Just got stumped himself. Hell. What about federal government takeover of Texas? They did. They 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 enacted many drills. Federal government took over Texas. Is that what you're saying? Are you saying that Jade Helm exercises didn't happen? No, they happened. So what's your point? Alex Jones' entire point was that it was the federal government trying to take over Texas. Are you familiar with are you familiar with geolocation and geo tracking and geo mapping? Uh that sounds like conspiracy theory garbage. So no. That's a government <laughs> document, sir. I don't believe that. Okay, so you're the one that comes to this debate in uh, uneducated and ignorant. It's not I can pull out any bogus random term from No, I'm citing government documents. It doesn't matter. You're using it. You can use it out of context. You can use it however no, sir. No, sir. You said Alex Jones was a conspiracy theorist on Jade Helm. I yeah. cited the government document that existed and the exercise, and then you fell blank. No, you used it out of context. I have no idea what Well, you brought up Jade Helm, and now how am I using it out of context? The word geolocation, geo whatever. Geospatial mapping? Yeah, okay, what it is. Yeah, what is it? Okay, so, what is it? so everyone here, everyone here has a cell phone, correct? At any given time, because of the applications on your cell phone, you have signed away your rights. They can turn on your camera. They can turn on your microphone. They can turn on everything. They have Snapchat. Snapchat. Snapchat has facial recognition, folks. What do you think they're doing with that technology? Absolutely correct. So I was responding to the gist man. So what do you say about that? I just told you what geospatial mapping is. I got nothing else to say. So I beat you. So now this guy has nothing else to say. And the fact of the matter is, is that, no, so this is obviously people that have Trump derangement syndrome. Listen, I don't agree with everything that Alex Jones says and does either. There's a lot of things I've got problems with in Alex Jones as well. But you know what? To say that he's wrong on every single thing that's out there is also not accurate. But that's a narrative that these guys want to portray because these people have Trump derangement syndrome. This is exactly what the left does, folks, when they talk to Trump supporters. And let's face it, sometimes people on the right, sometimes conservatives, they may not believe everything that's going on because they just don't, even in the face of evidence that's out there. But for whatever reason, they don't want to believe it. OK, that's fine. And when they get interviewed, they look as ridiculous as this person does right here. And the fact of the matter is, is that to say, you know what, I haven't heard of that, but I'd certainly like to go back and do my own due diligence on it and then see, because I'm not going to exactly take your word for it. But if you're saying there's a government document that's out there, I want to go ahead and take a look at it rather than just outlandishly saying, I don't believe that. But that's, anyways, that's the narrative, that's the spin that these leftists, you know, these progressives, uh, these liberals you know, want to take, especially those with Trump derangement syndrome. Anyways, let's continue. In a debate. No, you didn't. I'm a liar. <laughs> yeah. What did I lie about? You, I, don't, I don't know. You worked for Alex Jones. I will promise this man this. We will put this entire video on YouTube, sir. I promise you that. Uh, most people that have guns don't use them on other people. That's true. You said if you have a gun, you're going to use it. Well, we don't. What's that? I'm saying if you don't. have a gun, you most better be able people, to use it. Yes. Most people are overwhelmingly good. Okay. Yeah, well, but most people have a gun. 350 million Americans. Right. There are 310 no, that million guns. Right, that doesn't mean that most people have a gun. It doesn't distribute exactly, exactly that but, way. But you know, people. You know that. People you know are. That. 
He's exactly right. Pen or pen and teller is telling the lady on the right, you know that. What type of math is that? Two plus two equals nine? That's what she's basically trying to say here. She's ridiculous. She doesn't know what the hell she's talking about. Uh, no, blaming violence in that. movies and videos well, that's on insane. this. That's insane. That's no, insane. Really? It's it's not what is it insane. called? Art of War, Man of War? What are the kids oh, playing with duty? Uh, we don't allow that in our house. Really? Right. So Call of Duty. There needs to be more hugs in households. Those are mutually exclusive. More hugs in households. No, no video games. Just more hugs in in in, in your homes. This lady is saying she doesn't allow that in her home. <laughs> that I find very hard to believe. Well, nothing in Call of Duty says you can't hug your family. Uh, well, you know what? No, this says, boy's, this boy's no... favorite game pen was Call of Duty. Yes, and many, and many it's... peaceful people. You're doing the same thing. Uh, Call of Duty is the most popular game there is. Everyone's playing it, so of course bad people are going to play it too. Yeah, to try to blame Shakespeare and the violence in Shakespeare and the violence in art uh, for violence that happens in the real world is something that's been tried for years and is always wrong. People must take responsibility. We must stop blaming society well, and actually blame the perpetrator. Yeah, you know what? There's, there's I Call of Duty. Call of Duty is something that young people like and enjoy, and it's a game. I think and most of those people are violent. Most of the people are violent. Most of the people are violent. We need to take responsibility for our own houses. And we have to stop disliking our children. We attack comic books. We attack monster movies. Now we're attacking video games. Love our children and know that they can play. Take care of your household. Let them Wow. He just, that's a conservative talking point. I had no idea that his views were that strong on that. Now, the fact of the matter is, listen, there is so much gratuity, there is so much violence that's out there, there's so much sexualization that's out there. But the fact of the matter is, is that to comp all that, what are you going to do? Are you going to stop it? You can't stop it, folks. And to blame. Now, there are times when people have said the reason that we did that or the reason that it happened was because of X, Y, Z. It was because of a movie. It was because of a book. So if some, suppose, for example, somebody read Shakespeare and decided to commit suicide, are you going to blame Shakespeare for that? You can't continue doing this, folks. You've, when are we going to blame the people for taking the decisions themselves and put their responsibility on the side of the people that commit these acts, not the things that they say that might have caused them. Because even if that were, even if you were to believe that a hundred percent, the fact of the matter is, they still had a reason to say, "Okay, I read that. I saw that. It was written. I read it. But you know what? I'm not going to do that. That's just ridiculous." Jamie Foxx is one of the only celebrities that tweeted Fox out. Is bald. Well, he says Dead we wrong. cannot turn our backs and say that violence, violence in films or anything that we do doesn't have some sort of influence. It does. I so Jamie Foxx and I was talking, then what the hell are you involved in all the movies that contain gratuitous violence and gratuitous sex? Aren't you contributing to that, Jamie Foxx, if that's true? I, blame, I go along with that. Blame the killers. Why not yes. blame the killers? Well, some of the you killers learn blame their the killers artists. Blame movies. the killers, not the artists. Uh, Why are you blaming artists for something that bad people did? And it's, Shakespeare is not a bad person. He wrote beautiful stuff. It has suicide, it has murder, and it tells us something about our hearts. And people who watch Shakespeare don't kill. And Call of Duty is art. It is not some sort of propaganda well, thing. Well, and well, that's how, an how easy this? way how out. This? this is a case. Of of, of, uh, of of violence with guns, video games, and mental health. Now, here's a kid who was borderline autistic with Asperger's. They have a lot of social problems. They don't know no, how to, no violent problems. No, huh? no, no, no. Autistic People kids are usually victims. My yeah, point yeah. is that if you sit this kid in a room all day shooting people, shooting people, if they have no social skills, how do you know when that? They, because it's been, it's been well, he had no social skills. There's no evidence that Asperger's syndrome people go violent from playing no, games. No, this you is not about Asperger's. You have not one data point of evidence on that. I'm not saying that. Well, you just said it. I'm, you well, just said it. Let me try to be okay, clearer. Please. Here's a person who has troubles figuring out what's social and what's not. And he's inundated with shoot, 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 shoot. And then right. a little plan comes to cause, well, maybe I'll just go to school and shoot people. No, you've just done cause and effect where it doesn't exist.
There's no you, guilt. There's no guilt. There's no, no conscience. No, that's not true that there's no guilt and no he conscience. He wouldn't make eye that's contact not with Asperger. this barber. Please don't t tear those people apart. I'm I have good friends with Asperger's. They, they, they have conscience. They have empathy. All of that is not true. You're spreading lies about people who yes. are part of our society and that we need to love and take care of and okay. share it. Uh, Mr. Friedman, referring to the statements that you made about women who advocate equal pay for equal work. Gee, I thought I'd get a rise out of that sooner or later. <laughs> Delighted to have it. Um, yes, okay, I just would like to know if you're insinuating or perhaps, you know, point blankly saying that um, women and other minorities skills are inferior to those of those now holding those jobs and that they need to go through a period where their skills need to be improved and therefore deserve to be paid less no i don't think dessert has anything to do with it i'm not for, first of all i think dessert is an impossible thing to decide who deserves what nobody deserves anything <laughs> thank it's god so we true. get what we deserve <laughs> But, but I'm not saying that at all. I'm saying a very different thing. I'm saying that the actual effect of requiring equal pay for equal work will be to harm women. If women's skills are higher than men's in a particular job and are recognized to be higher, the law does no good because then they will be able to compete away and can get the same income. If their skills are less for whatever reason, maybe it isn't because they're it's their sex, maybe it's because they were out of the labor force, maybe it's for other reasons. And you say the only way you, can, you are able to hire them is by paying the same wage, then you're denying them the only weapon they have to fight with. If the unwillingness of the men to hire them is because the men are sexist, uh, are, 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 what's the phrase, racist, uh, sexist pigs or whatever, <laughs> if that's the only reason they want to hire them, nonetheless, you want to make it costly to them to exercise their prejudice. If you say to them, hmm, you have to pay the same wage no matter whether you pay higher women or men, then here's Mr. Sexist Pig. It doesn't cost him anything to hire men instead of women. However, if the women are free to compete and to say, well, now look, I'll offer my work for less, then he can only hire men if he bears a cost. If the women are really good as a man, uh, as good as a man, then he's paying a price for discriminating. And what you are doing, not intentionally, but by misunderstanding, when you try to get equal pay for equal work laws, is what you are doing is reducing to zero the cost imposed on people who are, who are discriminating for irrelevant reasons. And I would like to see a cost imposed on them. I'm on your side. Man, Milton Friedman, he's so good. You go back and take a look at his videos. The man is an absolute brainiac. What he was really trying to explain here to this young lady was the fact that in the marketplace, it will decide what the pay is going to be. And it's the same, if you take that analogy that he's using, it's the same thing that said that, okay, now you force the minimum wage. So now force the minimum wage, say, Federal minimum wage has got to be $15 an hour. Well, here's, and so now, who is that going to price out of the market? It's going to price out of the market those first time people that are looking for jobs, younger people, teenagers, women, minorities, and others who haven't had a chance to develop their skills in the labor force. So now, what's that person going to do? when he starts to hire somebody as a business owner. If he has a choice between hiring somebody who has got skills in that trade or has been working previously for a year, two years or whatever, and is now looking for a job and he's got two or three or four applicants that are brand, that haven't done a job yet and it's their first time in the workforce, who do you think that person is going to hire? He's going to hire the person that's got some skill level already because he doesn't have to spend as much time training him. Whereas the new person that's completely brand new, you're taking a chance, a risk on whether or not that person is going to be able to cut it, whether you're going to be able to train him, how long he's going to take to train, and then how long is he going to be able to do the workload on his own. And that has nothing to do with the skill set of whether it's um, sexist or whatever. It just depends upon Who's going to be able to do that job quickly, effectively, 
and get the most bang because that owner has got to get $15 worth an hour of return. He can't be paying somebody $15 an hour and getting back seven, eight or nine or $10 back in return. That's a losing proposition. Anyways, folks, we appreciate you taking the time to watch. You've been watching the Dr. Nasser Shake Show. I've been your host, Dr. Nasser. Hope you enjoyed uh, this video. Check out our other video links above and below. Put your comments down as well. My final thought as always is that when you're right, you're right. And when you're left, you're wrong. Until next time, folks, take care and stay safe.